Mr. Ball, for what purpose do you seek recognition? I ask unanimous consent to uh, address the committee for five minutes. Without objection. Would you strike the last word? Um, Mr. Okay. Chairman, uh, thank you. And um, I, I oppose this legislation. I do not challenge the motivation of those uh, who support this uh, legislation, but I think it's deeply flawed. And I think it's going to do a lot more harm than good. It reminds me of all the talk that uh, preceded us going into Iraq, all the wonderful things that could come by putting more pressure on a particular country, starting first with sanctions. Sanctions are an act of war. Uh, it was suggested that uh, Venezuela may be uh, going to send oil over there. That means maybe intercepts on the high sea. But uh, the best way for others to look at this, to see my point is, how would we react if somebody closed down our oil imports? I mean, we would be pretty unhappy about that. Uh, to think that this is not a serious matter, I think, is being rather uh, naive. First off, the, the Iranians uh, have a right to enrich for peaceful purposes. They have never been found in violations of the NPT Treaty, not, not once. Our NIE report says they haven't been working on a weapon since 2003, and just because you disagree with it, you just can't dismiss that report off out of hand. So there's, there's a lot of distortion on, on this information uh, that we get. Um, when we went into Iraq, there was an unintended consequences. There is still no stability there, but one thing for certain is Iraq is a much closer ally of Iran right now. We drove the Iraqis into the hands of the Iranians. And there's been an expression here that uh, this is a good bill, but we uh, still should be concerned about China. But if you're concerned about China, this is the best thing in the world for China. They are motivated. They have already invested in Iran. Uh, the production of petroleum products has uh, gone up significantly in Iran. So this is a, this is a big motivation uh, for the Iranians to do exactly what you don't want them to do. Now, the theory is that if we really punish the people, take, take their gasoline from them, and they're going to get angry, and they will. They're going to get angry at us. They're not going to get angry at the Ayatollah. You, what you're doing is you're deliberately undermining the dissidents there. They, they will lose all credibility. People, when they're attacked from the outside, as we were on 9-11, we come together. So all we do is we keep pounding on people like this, and we ruin the, the dissenting views that are, uh, uh, that are operating in that country. So I, I just think this is all going to uh, backfire. And uh, we, we need to think in terms of the principle of free trade. You know, the more you put on sanctions, the more likely you will be fight with them. We put on sanctions, and we knew we were destined, at least a lot of us thought we were destined to go to war in Iraq. And this, this means that we are willing to take on armed conflict. But you know what? What I don't understand is your willingness to, to sort of disrupt what the president's trying to do. I mean, the president's trying to negotiate and talk. He said he wanted to do it. He should be allowed to do this. This just, I think, disrupts what the president's trying to do. Recently, the president spoke at the United Nations, and under his uh, uh, pressure and leadership, he had U UN Resolution 1887 passed. He's been working multilaterally to try to bring peace to that area by having a uh, non-nuclear Middle East. So if that's the administration's position, to have a non-nuclear Middle East, then why, why do we do this to disrupt some of the things that, that he, is, he is trying to do? And uh, I, I just um, am, am disturbed by us not looking through and looking at the ramifications, looking at the unintended consequences, and this pretense that we can just do this and everything is going to come out all right. Because I really believe in the long run, we will suffer, the people will suffer, and there will not be more stability. How can we get terrified of a threat from the Iranians? You know, they're a third world nation. Up until recently, they couldn't even make their own gasoline. But because of our pressure so far, they're getting quite capable of doing it. We're driving them into the hands of the Chinese. They have our money. They can control us by, through the dollar. 
and yet we're driving the Chinese into taking over just as we drove the Iraqis to become close allies of the Iranians. I think our policies are deeply flawed. I say your motivations are fine and dandy, but motivations aren't the answer. We have to think of the consequences.